So in our Inventor 2013 part design, we created a pretty unique looking uh, diverter. And what we're going to do is take this and create some drawings off of it. It's going to require us to do both a section view and an auxiliary view uh, drawing set. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the uh, letter I in the corner. We're going to go to New. And this time we're going to go ahead and create a new ANSI IDW, or drawing file and choose create. Uh, the page comes in as a C-size page. We're going to need to change that. So we're going to right mouse click on sheet one, edit the sheet, and go back to B-size. We're going to delete the ANSI large, right mouse click and delete, and we're going to insert the ANSI A title block into the field. Okay, so at this point we now have saved our diverter. We're going to bring the initial diverter image in and we're going to choose a base view. Now the base view typically comes in as what was previously the front view of the diverter. We have to make a decision or we can you know, kind of make some decisions here. And what I'm thinking is that the base view being the front view may not be the best option for us because this particular side may be best for a section view. So let's go ahead and look at the right side view or the top view and make a decision. I think I'm going to go with the right side view. So we're going to go and set the right side view here at the right side view location. We're going to keep it as one to one. And instead of projecting any views, we're just going to go ahead and create it. So what I'm going to do what I did was I chose a new view, but you can see that the amount of hidden lines makes it a little bit more difficult to understand what's going on. So it's best for us to do a section. So we're going to create a section view. A section view is used to cut the part out, or used to, to cut the part in half. So the process of creating a section view is you need to pick the view that you're going to use as the cutting view, or the view that you're going to cut in. So I'm going to first left mouse click in the view. The second click is going to be where are you going to begin the cut? Well, don't begin the cut right on the edge of the object. I'm going to use the middle of the part as my location, but I'm going to move my, my little point above it because that is going to be the first cutting plane line location. I'm going to then bring the cutting plane line all the way through. Now could I stop at halfway and go in a different direction if it was an offset section view? You bet. We could also do aligned views, half sections, uh, any variety of section that we, we need to create, we can do that. So I'm just going to do a full section. So my second endpoint of the cutting plane line is going to be below the object, not on the edge of the object, but actually below the object. Those are the two points that I need to create to make a cutting plane line. When I'm done selecting those two points, I need to right mouse click and choose continue. The process will keep asking for you to create cutting plane lines until you choose continue. So I'm going to go ahead and project the image. So I'm going to project in the direction that I need to create, but you'll see that a dialog box has been created. It's going to be identified as section A. It's going to be a one-to-one -one scale. It's going to be a full section. Uh, and I'm going to left mouse click in that position where it's going to be located. Okay, so what we have discovered is that in our original design, that hole did not go all the way through yet. So that bottom hole did not actually breach the cavity. We did get a good breach here of the uh, the vertical hole, but the horizontal hole did not breach the cavity, which means that we need to extend it beyond an inch and a half. Hmm. So what do we have to do now? Well, we actually need to go back to the original IPT of the diverter, hole number one, and edit that feature, and instead of an inch and a half, Let's go and make this 1.75, choose OK. We have to save our work, and when we save our work, 
the image is now automatically updated and you can see that it's now been modified and changed. So things about the section view are important. We wouldn't have discovered that that hole did not go all the way through uh, easily on a side view. There'd be more lines, it might be more confusing, and so having a section view makes it a very clean, understandable environment. Dimensioning on section views is is standard with a stand is consistent with a standard orthographic view. There's no rules uh, other than you don't want to run too many dimension lines through any of the section lines which are highlighted now. You want to do most of the dimensioning around the outside of the part for the feature shapes. If you need to, you could move the label of the section down. You could also edit the label if you needed to by double clicking on it, but that will give you uh, the general information that you need. I'm going to need to create a new sheet for an auxiliary view, which is our second type of custom view we need to create. So I'm going to right mouse click in the browser window. We're going to choose new sheet. Again, when we create a new sheet, it's automatically going to use the current sheet format, meaning in ANSI A title block, B size sheet shape, and we're ready to go with an auxiliary view. So the auxiliary view is going to be our base view, and our base view again is the front. So I'm going to go ahead and place the front view, and this time you'll see that that front view works really well. I could place a side view if I choose to, but in this case I've got a side view in the other sheet so I'm not going to worry too much about the side view. Well, let's put the side view in so you can get an idea of how all this relates. And I'm going to go ahead and create these two views. So I've got the front view and the side view, but I need that to show you how everything relates to each other. The third view I need to create is an auxiliary view and the auxiliary view is based on the angled line. We're going to be projecting off this angled surface. And the reason why is because the actual holes here are not true size in the right side of view. So these are elliptical shaped holes. They're not true holes. The only way to get a true hole is to project from that angled surface. So like the section view, I need to pick the view first that I would like to project from. I also now need to select the angled line that I need to work with and I'm going to project the view. Now what typically may happen is that this view may be too large and we may end up having to crop it at times. In this case I'm going to leave it a little bit large since it's an instructional video but realistically you don't want to be outside the shape of or outside the border of your drawing environment. If you have to, you might have to go up and either A, change the scale, which is what I would do here, is that I would go and change the base scale by right mouse clicking, edit the view scale, so I'm going to edit the view, and change my scale from 1 to 1 to 1 half to 1, and then choose OK, and then all my images will update with the appropriate scaling. But the key is is that a hole can be projected across and then up to a specific location. Now typically I would also take the hidden lines out of this view. So I would edit this view and this view is being based on our current view. So I'm going to take this check mark out which means that it's not going to be taking on the characteristics of our projection, but I am going to remove all the hidden lines. So if we take the check mark off, it's no longer linked to the original view. I can then change the shading and I can get rid of the hidden lines. Much cleaner orientation here. I can see what's going on now. And so when I annotate and create dimensions, I'm going to be dimensioning the position from the edge of the object and between the two holes that one didn't work as, as planned so 
so let's dimension from center line to center line and we could put in actual center lines here also the dimension type that I would like is an aligned dimension here let's line this dimension up in just a second I need to put one more dimension in which is the vertical dimension when I'm done I'm gonna choose OK I can then edit and bring this dimension in line with the rest and I could add center marks to the circles to give it a little bit cleaner look I can also dimension the circles Two space capital X space again I use the spaces just because I think that looks a little bit cleaner you can use it with or without spaces and that will give you the true size placement and lo the true size placement and size of the hole I could also use a whole note since I use the whole command I could have just used the whole note and instead of the edited note that I have here so I could delete this edit this change this to two space capital X space and now I've got the whole note with the depth already indicated so you can build it both directions this is the only view this view is the only view that these holes get dimensioned in so there is no hole dimensioning on hidden lines there is no hole dimensioning even though they're object lines these are ellipses they're not true size so the key is auxiliary views are used to, to provide true size and position information for objects located on the angled surface have a great day